Bye-bye. Okay. We're not, we not going to get a countdown. Please, they must let us know that we live now. Please. I uh, think Tamisha. Tamisha will let us know. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our panel discussion on the modernization of the mining industry. Uh, this is uh, a discussion as part of the National Science Week activities. So this is uh, one of the um, CSIR activities that are really geared at uh, promoting the sciences, uh, technology and engineering uh, to particularly um, young students you know, so to get them really interested in the in the sciences and the engineering field. And just to start off, I would like to introduce the panel members. Um, they all are researchers in the CSIR. I'll start off with um, Zama Swazin Kosi, who's a, a geologist um, with the mining and mineral resources uh, under the mining cluster of the CSIR. And Vigeli Mbofu, who's the, uh, he's a mining engineer. And uh, Sumaya Khan, a senior engineering geologist. Um, uh, thank you, uh, panel members. Thank you for agreeing to join such a discussion. And on that, I'd like to again welcome everyone and we can start our conversation. But just to, to what is the importance of us talking even about mining? I think, as we already know, uh, mining is a cornerstone, has been and still continues to be the cornerstone of our economy. And it's really important that we uh, keep a focus on it, uh, especially when we're looking at um, involving young people in, in the mining industry, because we also need you know, to have a pipeline of uh, people who are going to come and take over the industry forward, especially looking at, you know, innovating the, the mining industry. And, you know, that's really what we're talking about. How, how are we going to modernize this? We also, when looking at the, the mining industry, one of the important things is uh, we need to mine safely. Um, our mining industry has the zero harm objective. Uh, so every worker must come to work um, unharmed and go back to work healthy and safe um, and go back to their families. Um, the other thing that we really need to also focus on is that as we mine, we must mine um, profitably and productively. Um, you know, with, when we're looking at uh, currently the input costs are so high, our, our bodies are deeper. So you know, it's it's really important uh, to modernize the mine so that we actually uh, mine profitably. And I must add, uh, sustain to, to keep our industry moving forward. Now, um, that's, that's a bit about mining. As we know, we have many commodities, um, you know, from coal uh, to gold and your platinums. Uh, we have from surface mining, to underground mines. So um, I think as a, as a background, you know, there's the importance of having such conversations and really looking uh, forward to uh, the panelists telling us more about modernization and how that can really benefit the, the industry. But maybe just to, to start off, maybe just for, for everyone who joined in to the meeting, maybe we could start there. Um, what is actually modernization and what does it mean for uh, the South African mining industry and also internationally. Uh, maybe if I can start off with um, Vigeling Bofu, maybe if you can maybe um, let us know what you think about modernization. Uh, well, if I can put it in simple terms, I'll say that uh, modernization is the continuous or progressive change that happens in the mining uh, operations, uh, in the way things are done for, from like the processes that are uh, implemented to the methods, to the standards uh, that are involved, as well as all the associated technologies that, that uh, are used uh, as, the, as mining has progressed over the years. 
Uh, so the, the, some of the changes include uh, changes to safety. Uh, if you look back in the past, they, they, they used to be a high number of accidents in the mines due to uh, uh, the, the safety standards and regulations that were there at the time. But as time moves forward, uh, the, the, the better uh, standards are implemented, better practices are implemented, uh, as well as uh, better technologies and, and machines and equipment uh, are implemented uh, uh, as the years move move forward. Uh, as, as the other change is also uh, uh, with the equipment and machinery that are used. Uh, in the past, there used to be simple tools like shovels and picks that are used uh, that involved a lot of manual labor, but as mining progressed over the years, uh, the, there's better equipment that doesn't require people to actually uh, use their manual labor throughout the, the, the shift. And with with all this modernization that happens in the mining industry over time, there's also a change in the, the skills associated with, with uh, the, the, the mining operations. Mm -hmm. The skills change from, from like manual uh, skills to more technical skills, uh, as well as non-technical skills that include uh, uh, social skills as well. I think, simply put, I can say that. Um, thank you, Vigeli. Thanks for, for, for that input. And maybe if I can um, maybe hear from Sumeya, uh, maybe from, from your side, um, yes, what, what, what's your take on modernization? Thank you, Chabang. Um, so mining modernization, as um, Vigeli mentioned, is about improved uh, current processes as well as the development and implementation of technologies in mining. So it includes things like mechanization of equipment, automation of processes, the use of data analytics for improved decision making. But apart from all those technical things that um, Vikeli um, uh, discussed in some detail, uh, mining modernization is also about uh, social and environmental uh, issues. Um, it's, it's a mindset change. It's about how we can assist people to navigate um, through and adapt to uh, mining modernization. So how can we uh, upskill these people to uh, take up uh, new jobs that are created? How can we create alternative economies, uh, which uh, then creates more jobs for them? And uh, I think from an environmental perspective, it's about mining companies uh, implementing initiatives to contribute towards the national objectives towards climate uh, change uh, mitigation measures. And uh, concepts such as the green economy and the circular economy therefore go hand in hand with mining modernization. Thanks. Mm. Uh, thank you, Sumeya. Uh, I like uh, what, what you just said and between yourself and V. Uh, so it's not only about you know technology. Uh, from you know the angle you come with, it will also involve um, you know, people, we need to take them along the whole journey. And, you know, as you're talking about this, you know, the environment, uh, there are many benefits towards uh, modernization. Uh, as you talked about uh, secular economy and and such, so it really is um, um, very, very beneficial for, for our local industry. And maybe just um, modernizing the uh, the mining operations. Why is it imperative uh, for our mining sector to to modernize? Uh, maybe if I can hear from uh, Zama, maybe if I can share your inputs there. Thanks, Tabang. Um, so you know, oh, it's it's just before I start, it's you know very imperative for us um, to 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 modernize um, our mining operations. Um, so in reality, um, or the reality of things is that, um, so I'll just speak, speak on the perspective of our um, underground gold mines. I'll take that as an example. So our mines are aging, right? So in a sense, um, um, so that means that we are getting the increase um, in mining depth. So that means that our old bodies are becoming deeper and deeper. The travel times to the working places are increasing, resulting in decreased actual working time um, at the faces. And this all translates now to reduced production and mounting operating costs. So just to dwell on the old bodies becoming deeper and deeper, 
um, aspect. Um, if we, you know, we all remember from our physics classes is that as you go deeper in the surface or into the Earth's crust, your geothermal gradient increases, so the temperature increases. So if I can make an example um, from the, you know, gold mines in our Carlton, Wool, Clackstop, Orkney, Vulcan regions, um, the virgin rock temperature at about 2,000 meters below surface is about 40 degrees. And South Africa has some of the world's deepest gold mines, which have currently have operating depths of about 3,500 meters or about 3.5 kilometers. So you can just imagine um, the temperature um, at those at those depths. So with this South Africa being home to the deep mines and possible expansion plans for the mines, um, you can already imagine that it's going to become extremely difficult to continue mining um, at deeper depths if we just consider the temperature aspect. So then mining companies will have to, you know, invest, you know, in solutions to, 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 to cool the working uh, place. And there's been a number of initiatives and there still are a number of, you know, projects or solutions being proposed, such as, you know, the cooling garments, uh, certain um, aspects of, you know, ventilation that need to be revitalized in order for it to be suitable um, to such depths. And also um, just um, still on the deeper uh, mining um, aspects of the depleted ore bodies. Um, other challenges that are presented by this, uh, for example, is seismicity. And um, what seismicity is, or mining-related seismicity, is the occurrence of small-scale or large-scale um, earthquakes um, in the mining regions. So what happens is that um, um, you get geological structures underground called faults, and these structures or these fractures um, will get activated or reactivated with continued mining. So the deeper we go um, and the more we encounter, you know, these structures and activate them, we might be prone to more uh, seismic events. And those seismic events, you know, either result in destruction of infrastructure of the mine, underground destruction of equipment, and in more unfortunate cases, the loss of life. So we need to prepare um, our underground, you know, working conditions um, for, you know, the increased stress conditions, the increased seismicity. And we'll do that, you know, by implementing um, geological solutions to help us to better map and better determine or predict, if you may, um, the locations of, you know, geological structures that might harm our mining operations. We will use geotechnical solutions um, in order to, you know, support our underground workings properly, um, implement proper mine design strategies, you know, in order to deal with all those um, harsh conditions um, that we will potentially encounter the deeper we mine. So definitely that's why um, it is important for us to, um, to adopt, um, you know, a modernizing mining modernized mining because certainly our mining conditions are going to change the deeper we go underground. Thank you. Thank you, Zama, for, for the input. Um, uh, that was actually quite good to know, um, especially that you highlighted the current challenges with our, like your example, our gold deposits, um, you know, being uh, very deep, and I can imagine, like you were saying, the world probably wants to close on you, um, so it, it probably will get very, very uh, difficult, and, you know, that's why we, we need, you know, uh, modernization and technological solutions, basically, to work with this. And, Vigeli, yes, um, what, you know, why is it imperative for, uh, for the mining industry to modernize? Maybe you know, just to hear from, from your side, yeah, yeah. Just to, to also link up to to what Sama just mentioned, uh, uh, mining, especially underground operations, uh, when they're increasing in depth, there's also other challenges such as the increasing uh, energy costs that are uh, included in it. There's also incre uh, increases in the hoisting when when the 
the rock has been blasted and it has to be taken out of an underground mine, for example, to the surface for it to be processed. The the, the energy required to, to, to remove it from those areas to the surface uh, uh, also increases, uh, as well as the hoisting uh, uh, aspect of it also increases. Therefore, also, also the ventilation uh, costs increase for you to reduce the temperature, for example, that Summer mentioned that at about 40 degrees is not conducive for people to, to work in. Therefore, you need uh, ways of uh, uh, improving your ventilation systems to enable uh, uh, workers to work in a, in a, in a friendly, uh, uh, workable environment without uh, I mean, uh, them causing harm to their, to, to their health. Uh, there's also the need to, to, to in, improve the, the productivity uh, in, in the mining operations. So mining involves uh, in, in high level drilling, blasting, uh, and then cleaning the, the rock that you drilled and moving it to, to, the, to the surface. So all these processes need like continuous improvement and, and the generation of, of technological solutions or changes in the methods in, in which the things are done uh, so, so that you, 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 you continuously mine profitable because at the end of the day, you, you, you want your mine to be profitable so that you, you maintain the, the, the employment that you, you, the people that you employ or to even increase the, 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 number, the employment. So you have to, to mine up in a productive manner. Therefore, you always need to be improving your processes, your methods, as well as uh, generating new technological solutions to, to continuously improve. So in essence, the modernization of mining comes with, with all those innovative solutions to the mining that, that improves both safety and productivity of, of mines. Therefore, it is an important thing to, to to, to continue modernizing the mine, to, 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 to adapt to the changing uh, environmental conditions as well as the, the economical uh, conditions of the country and uh, mm. the global world as a whole. Mm. Uh, thank you, Vigeli. Um, uh, if I hear you you saying also, and, and maybe Sumeya, you'll, you'll jump in here, it, it's also opening up opportunities for uh, saving on cost of actually operating the mine because I could imagine even the commodity prices, I think that's one I need to think about. And and you guys have touched on, you know, the electricity prices now, the water and generally running the mine, the input costs are high. So it also opens up that, that opportunity for cost saving. And Sumeria, maybe just to hear from you, maybe to add on, um, what, what's your take? Okay, so apart from the challenges that was mentioned earlier, uh, some of the other challenges that the mining sector faces are health and safety issues, social and environmental challenges. So in order to uh, address these, it's important for companies to strive towards uh, modernization to ensure safety through uh, automation, to uh, enable the um, uh, creation of jobs through upskilling and reskilling of people and through the creation of alternative economies across the mine value chain, and also to be able to reach our national carbon neutrality goals, um, you know, as a nation. Um, also, by uh, modernizing our mines, we could also um, make our mining sector in the country more attractive towards investors. Right, um, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's that's yeah. That's another perspective that we really also need to to look at. Um, like um, you know, coming in maybe also not just focusing on technical issues. You know, there are also broader, bigger issues. And you know, the mining industry really has a um, lot of processes going on from the actual extraction. Um, in fact, we can even start off from exploration, uh, you know, locating your ore body, extracting the ore body, you know, and then going to mineral processing. Uh, we know that we have underground operations, we have surface operations. Just uh, I'd like to hear maybe your comments on where have we seen greater traction uh, so far for mining modernization uh, as we're moving forward? Um, where has there been uh, traction there? Um, uh, maybe, Vigeli, um, maybe uh, where have you seen traction? 
Uh, I, I think that the, the, the pace at which maybe modernization or, or like the adoption of technologies and, and improving uh, systems within the mining industry is is, is determined by uh, factors that include like environmental factors, uh, such as if you look at surface mines uh, uh, in comparison to underground mines, surface Surface mines are like in, in the open. For example, if you drive past Mpumalanga or Emalathleni and, and, and Sasopek and, and those areas, you will see that you see these big machines, uh, uh, track lines and trucks, for example. Uh, uh, whereas in underground operations, the, the machines are much smaller due to the, the environment at which they operate. They operate in smaller tunnels. Uh, so in, 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 broadly, I would say that uh, surface mines have progressed a bit faster uh, 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 with with modernizing and improving the, the technology in, in their sectors compared to underground operations, which are restricted uh, by the, the, the uh, environmental uh, constraints. Uh, as well as the, uh, another thing that may, may affect is the, the available funding for it. So you find that other operations progress faster in, in modernizing uh, compared to other operations due to the, the funding uh, available. If maybe your company has, has better profits than the other one, you will, you will have extra to invest in, in research and development and the generation of new, new ways of doing things at a faster pace than the, 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 the other people. So uh, uh, maybe if then we move into the, the, the operations itself, I'll say communication has improved in the in the in the surface mines as well as as you are able to to monitor your trucks while they are at the pit and and you are at the office. So over the years that has improved uh, quite a, as well as the. the Safety-related issues, as uh, like the the use of the correct uh, PPE, like protective uh, equipment in, in in mining operations, that that has improved uh, quite a lot, uh, as well as other other systems like warning systems, for example, uh, uh, for for to avoid people and and uh, machinery. Uh, coming into close proximity to each other and resulting in accidents. So there, there has been quite a number of uh, technology uh, modernization improvements in different sectors. But yeah, for now, I think I'll say surface mines have improved more than uh, underground uh, mines. Mm, okay, thanks. Thanks, um, Vigeli. And Zama, maybe have you noticed, um, you know, a bit of some traction? Um, so MV is absolutely right. Um, you know, just because of the, you know, the environment um, that the surface mines are in, um, you know, they have been able to do more. But we have also, you know, seen um, some underground mines move from a more, um, you know, conventional way um, of operating to more hybrid models where they now incorporate some aspects of, um, you know, mechanization into their operation. Um, we have seen now, you know, also in, in some of the gold mines, you know, that have embraced this, um, you know, modernization, um, the unmanned, um, the automated uh, vehicles um, um, that they use there now. Uh, we've also seen, you know, the change from, you know, handheld drilling to more um, automated um, drilling. Um, we also see in some um, um, in some underground mines that the, you know, automated vehicles can be fitted, you know, with systems that measure, you know, the tons that are transported at any given time. And that is monitored by, you know, uh, engineers and such on surface. So also communication, um, you know, has improved. The efficiency, you know, has uh, certainly improved in, uh, you know, some of, um, you know, underground mines as well. Um, it's just, you know, it is difficult and a more slower process of adoption in the underground mines compared to surface mines because of all these, um, you know, constraints and confinements um, that are presented um, in the underground environment. However, we do see um, that the, the, the underground mines are also definitely moving into the modernizing um, direction. Mm, okay. Yes, that's that's um that's thanks for 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 the comments there. 
and and just maybe we share i i see their uh, questions in we I'll, I'll just maybe as as we go on with the conversation maybe just take one so because i think it's relevant to to this discussion uh we have a researcher uh who is asking that yes they agree that modernization in mines is inevitable uh but you know they're also highlighting that you know mines you know really the adoption is the is the a bit of an issue but they're just asking um in your opinion what would be the reason for this i don't know who wants to uh, take that one uh, sorry, if you can come again, what is the reason for... Uh, yes, what is the reason for, for the mines to resist adopting modernization? Okay, well, it's, it's maybe uh, uh, it's not resisting per se. Like, like I mentioned earlier that uh, every mine has different uh, environmental constraints as well as uh, financial constraints. So. It, it takes the, the, that mind to first uh, do an assessment of their, their operation uh, and, and realize whether they, they, they are able to, to, to modernize their mind uh, and, and still uh, produce uh, profitable and still and continue with the operation in, in, in a profitable manner. Uh, uh, mm. but, but there's also the aspect of, of uh, uh, of collaboration and, and stakeholder engagement in, in these processes. So if, if like the uh, technological implementation, for example, if you bring in a new piece of equipment and saying you, you, you're modernizing your mind by, by bringing in technology, you know, the, the technological implementation process should be like a, a collaborative uh, uh, process that includes uh, all the stakeholders from the, the, the man, people who manufacture the, the, that type of equipment so that they de de design it in an economical way for whoever is going to use it to, to be able to, to, to accept it and, and, and make it their, their, their own piece of equipment. You also have to consult uh, the, the community and how that those type of equipment are going to affect maybe their, their their jobs in case they need to go for, for for further training or new types of training so that they can use those types of equipment or be involved in those types of processes and new method methodologies so it's it's a, if it's a consultative process uh, a collaborative process that includes all the stakeholders and the proper change management plan that is implemented, I think there, there will be a, a success in, in modernizing that mind. But at the end of the day, the, the, the whatever new change you, you bring should be uh, uh, enable the mind to, to, to mine uh, in a profitable way. So I, I would say maybe the resistance will be uh, in the gaps that are there in failure to, to of the stakeholders to understand each other and come into a, a common uh, goal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, V. And maybe here I have another comment coming from the from the audience. Maybe Sumaya, if I can, um, you know, direct it to you. Uh, basically, it says uh, social and environmental changes are, you know, really fundamental, and they are usually lacking in the uh, modernization designs. But the question here is, how will we make sure it is included in our thinking? Um, I think there has been um, reference to concepts like the green economy and circular economy in many of our policies, although it, it might not fall under the umbrella of mining uh, modernization directly. Uh, but I think recently, because of um, the uh, signing of the Paris Agreement, uh, South Africa was one of the countries that committed to reaching carbon neutrality by, I think, 2030, 2040 or so. Um, there is a lot of awareness around those issues uh, in the recent years. And I think mining companies are moving towards that, um, especially by uptaking short-term opportunities like mine waste uh, beneficiation and so on. Um, so yes, there is awareness around it and slowly it's been gaining traction. Um, mm. uh, thank you for, for the input, um, uh, Sumeya. And uh, to underpin the quest to modernize the sector, uh, which technologies or method um, 
can be explored uh, in the various disciplines of of mining. Um, maybe if we can also touch touch on that. Um, um, maybe Zama, uh, what's what's your take on that? Um, so you know, just because of my background in the um, geology geophysics um, space, I would say that. Um, especially in the exploration um, space, I think there's, you know, um, and 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 in mining, there's now a lot of you know updating of you know um, algorithms and these machine learning processes that you know are enabling us, and these you know are now you know recent projects enabling us to go back to you know old um, geophysical data sets. And, you know, interpreting, you know, the data, identifying, you know, geological hazards um, and things like that. And it's only, you know, the um, new uh, technologies that are allowing us, you know, to be able to do that. So in the um, so just on the, you know, AI and machine learning space, just in the geophysics space, we are making progress by utilizing the old data sets, working with, you know, um, the mines and mine planning and being part of that, you know, process where as research or academic institutions, um, we are, you know, providing that to them, you know, more detailed interpretation. Um, of their or bodies of their subsurface to enable them to just um, plan better. Mm, thank you. And and maybe um, Vigeli from from your side. Yeah, I, I can maybe look at it from a, a safety point of view to say that they, there is an opportunity to to develop uh, uh, technologies or, or new ways of mining or new methods of mining or processes. Uh, uh, lead to the to, to, as you mentioned at the beginning, zero harm. Like so, because you don't want to to put to work and then get injured while you are trying to earn a living from work. Like if you go to school and then uh, uh, when you are at school, you you, you know that uh, uh, they, 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 they you can fall or something. It's slip slippery ground. So they make sure the environment at your school is is is, is safe for you to to walk in. Uh, and and, and go back home without injured. So there, there's also opportunities in the mining industry to, to create technologies that that uh, have to do with improving safety and reducing the, the, the number of accidents. For example, there's uh, what they call collision avoidance uh, technologies. Uh, the, the, these technologies are uh, like involve the use of sensors in, in different uh, equipment types or, or, or people as well, so that you are aware of where the person is and where the, 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 the type of equipment or a machine is to avoid uh, the, them coming into close proximity or, or causing accidents with, without the, the operator of the machine being aware. So such, such uh, uh, sensors are... Uh, uh, will be important going forward in the in the in the mining industries. The development of these sensors and and all the mm. the collection of the data around the machine and around the employee uh, will be important in in planning for for future uh, mines and so on, as well as the the situational awareness. If you collect a, a data about your machine, you are able to re realize when when the, that machine needs to be taken for maintenance or when when when, when you know that uh, these tires last for uh, such and such a time, then you already know when you plan to replace those tires. So all these things uh, have got to do with technology. Therefore, there's opportunity in, in those fields that in the technology development, the design of software uh, that, that, that can be used by mines to either improve productivity or to, to improve uh, safety in mining operations. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Miguel, because we have uh, seen uh, recently the uptake of the usage of drones in mines, where the drone is fitted with different sensors and now, you know, can access areas which would, you know, be unsafe uh, to send a person in. So, yes, it's, um, you know, in terms of even, you know, just training and preparing people, now we see augmented reality now being used as a tool you know, just for, you know, for people to be aware how's the underground environment like. 
And Sumeya, maybe just to to hear from from your side, maybe if you could add on. Yeah, I see you touched on uh, the the use of drones for data collection that would be in the geoscience discipline. Uh, it makes data collection a lot uh, faster than traditional methods. It also can be cost effective as well, and it's um, possible to get information from um, areas where uh, people cannot access, you know, uh, dangerous terrains. Um, looking at geophysics, there's equipment such as the borehole radar and ground penetrating radar that can be used to collect uh, structural information uh, from the host rock that is being mined. Um, and then talking about modern training methodologies, we're looking at things like augmented reality and virtual reality um, to upskill and reskill people. For example, if you're training someone on how to uh, drill through rock, um, they not only attain the skills of the actual drilling uh, process, but they attain uh, problems, uh, problem solving skills, decision making skills, and it also enables them to see what are the implications if the drilling is done inaccurately. So I think also digital uh, learning methods is uh, gaining more traction. Um, there's uh, a, st a study that we did revealed that a hybrid method would work best and is the most preferred method of learning. So a 50-50 classroom-based and digital um, training methods are most uh, beneficial to um, uh, people that, that are being trained. Mm. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's insightful. And maybe just uh, uh, another question just coming through, uh, maybe just looking at... Um, you know, modernization opportunities and solution for legacy mines, uh, you know, the old mines, uh, those with little or no ICT infrastructure. Uh, what what modernization opportunities are there? Um, I'll throw it to you, Vigil. Uh, I think the, 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 the modernization uh, aspects will be in the process changes mostly, like to... to Identify in your in your mining cycle where where uh, there's opportunities for you to 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 make an improvement. Uh, for example, uh, I can take uh, an example and say when when uh, rock is blasted, uh, they, they, there's generation of of uh, noxious fumes like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and so on, and therefore people. Uh, will have to be removed from the mine so that the, the ventilation system clear, clears uh, the, 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 all those uh, dangerous gases and then people can come back to, to, to work in a safe environment. That's like in the, in the, in the legacy mines, for, uh, for example, in the old cold mines. And therefore, you, you try to identify ways in which maybe you want to reduce that time it takes for, 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 for people to come back to work again uh, 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 and reduce the, the amount of of those gases at a quicker rate so that you have a longer time uh, for people to actually do work at a mine. So that, that's mm -hmm. a, one aspect of, if you can say, you, you have uh, identified the way of, of modernizing your process because it doesn't necessarily mean you have to bring like a new technology or equipment. Another mm -hmm. aspect could be in drilling, for example, you improve like uh, a small changes to, to your drill uh, drilling machine design to, to, so that it can maybe drill uh, one hole quicker than it used to drill it before. Uh, uh, and then you will be able to drill more meters uh, uh, quicker than you, you you used to to do before, or like maybe to to make that drill safer to use, so that or maybe make it lighter to use, so that whoever is carrying it can can perform uh, uh, optimally without having to to slow down the process. So you have actually modernized in a way without uh, implementing any technological changes, but making minor changes to to what you already have in, in your in your machinery or equipment or in your uh, 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 system. Uh, as a whole. Yes, uh, because while you on that, I, I I remember the efforts, the research and development which uh, came out recently. Um, being part of the Mandela Mining Precinct, really designing a quicker, lighter uh, drill to be used. So so yes, I, I I hear what you say. And let's let's just con consider this uh, this transformation taking place in the 
many industries. Now, I'd just like to hear your comments on what opportunities actually exist for, for younger people, um, you know, looking to follow careers in this, in this sector. Um, maybe, Zama, what, what opportunities exist there? Um, so, you know, we've been, you know, talking the whole time about, um, you know, these technologies and systems. Um, conventionally at the mines, you have your mining engineers, your rock engineers, geologists. So, you know, those, uh, you know, people are really, you know, the core of mining. But with the modernization, we see um, new skills Um entering the mining industry, um, you know, skills that, you know, were really housed in, for example, let's say IT. All these, you know, systems and data, you know, that we want to, um, you know, acquire with the sensors, they, you know, they need people, first of all, who will design the sensors. So already, you know, in the manufacturing, um, you know, space, um, you've already, you know, uh, have or you need uh, capabilities in that space. You need the people that will, you know, develop the software developers that will develop the softwares that will be used on these technologies. Mm -hmm. um, you need now the geologist to be able to, you know, run the programs, you know, so it's just existing uh, personnel that will need um, reskilling and this addition of the new skills from the ITs, from the um, systems um, engineering. But also you're going to need, you know, the skills um, from, um, and Sumaya, um, you know, will add on to this or can add on to this, um, the soft skills. You're going to need um, you know, the people that are going to be involved, you know, or, or, or lead the change management uh, processes um, in the minds when these different, you know, technologies are being adopted. So it's not only just the hard skills um, that are really going to be important um, for this uh, for these modern minds, but we're also seeing that we're going to need um, the new uh, skills or the soft skills um, coming in as well. Mm, yes, um, um, yeah, thanks for that, Zama. Uh, maybe, Sume, if you just could add, add a little there on, you know, like Zama just open it up a little bit, looking at maybe what other opportunities lie in not only technical fields uh, but just looking at the the other fields that will be needed to support all this um, uh, modernization of the industry thanks Amma. thanks to um so if you're looking at um, the social aspects you can uh, consider going into uh, the social sciences like industrial psychology for example um, Human resources management is a big one. Um, yeah, and also the business side of things as well. Um, I think there's going to be a need for, for both business, uh, social, as well as environmental experts. And I think uh, things like change management also becomes quite important. I'm not sure if universities offer courses on those, but you'll have to find out more on, on what there is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, um, thank you, thank you, uh, Sumeya. Um, Vigeli, you want to touch a bit on that? Yeah, I think I think Sumeya and Zama put it uh, nicely. Uh, mm -hmm. Mining doesn't uh, uh, exist in isolation, so there's there's the core uh, uh, skills that will be required, and the course courses that you need to to uh, that one Elena would need to go through while at university, and then there's other supplementary uh, uh, opportunities that exist in the information technology, uh, systems analysis, software development, application development, and so on. So uh, as in, as a as a as a whole, you you have a vast amount of skills that are can be applied in the in the mining industry as well as at other sectors so so as a for example as a mining engineer of of now and the future you will need to have an understanding of 
all these different uh, uh, skills so that you are equipped with both some bit of uh, understanding of how software or, or how software comes into your, uh, your your role as a mining engineer, be able to analyze data and, and, and make informed decisions based on the data that you collected. Uh, also make decisions that exist maybe outside your your like to, to be informed in decisions and, and activities that ex exist outside your specific role, uh, but be an, an over, overall, uh, overall skilled uh, mining engineer. So there, there's definitely opportunities in the core in the core courses like mining engineering, chemical engineering, metallurgical engineering, mm -hmm. uh, uh, chemical engineering, as well as uh, other other aspects like information technology, social sciences, uh, and, and so on. And and there are bursaries out there like for 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 learners to apply for and so it it, it will be wise for for people to as much, if you have data to go on TikTok you know you save some of the data to go on Google and and look for bursaries that 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 you can uh, uh, use to to. Uh, conduct your studies at a university in, in not specifically to the commonly known engineering, but find as much information as you can because uh, the, the, the whole modernization is, is like a multifaceted uh, uh, industry. Mm, thank you, Mvi. Uh, and, and I like that, that, you know, young people should also be on the lookout for, you know, opportunities for, you know, bursaries being offered um you know by mining companies you know uh because you know they really looking at uh, their pipeline of uh, people who are gonna be coming in uh, to assist on their operations and you have touched a bit on uh my next question which i wanted to for us to sort of uh discuss um for the young people out there uh really maybe looking at uh in order to pursue a career in mining uh, which subject does one uh, need to take? I know you've you've touched on that, but maybe to start off with uh, Zama and Sumeya, I have one question here asking uh, that once you get to tertiary, uh, which degree is applicable to do uh, if one wants to be a geologist? So for you, Zama, and an engineer, the geologist for, for you, Sumeya, maybe if we can start the conversation there. Uh, thanks, Sam. Um, okay, so, okay, I'll start a bit, uh, then uh, Sumeya will add on. Uh, yeah, so both Sumeya and I are geologists, but uh, mm. different uh, geologists. Right. Um, I am a, a mining a geologist strictly, so what or oh, how my tertiary uh, stream looked like was I did um, maths, chemistry, uh, physics, um, and uh, geology uh, as majors. And then in my uh, second year to, to honors, I also did um, mining engineering. So the institution that I studied in offered um, that route that if you want to go into mining geology, then from second year, um, you do mining engineering courses as well as um, the geology courses. I then moved on to uh, do my honours um, and I, I was fortunate to, you know, then still carry on with mining um, geology um, um, you know, as 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 a subject. So I graduated with the degree in mining geology, and then I also did my honors um, in mining uh, uh, geology. Mm, okay, thank you, thank you, Zama. Uh, Sumeya. So I studied at the University of KwaZulu Natal, and this was many many years ago now. Um, yeah. So the undergrad degree was in BSc Geological Science. And for the first year, I think the courses are pretty much common across all the science disciplines. It was maths, uh, physical science, chemistry, and I chose biology. Um, actually, something interesting is that I didn't start off with geology. I was doing biological science, but fortunately, my credits got carried over to my second year. So there was no loss. 
Um, then from my second year onwards, you get to choose courses specific to the stream that you want to major in. And I wanted to do engineering geology as opposed to ore deposits or mining geology. Um, so the courses that I chose was uh, soil resources, water resources, um, and then in my third year and honors, rock mechanics, soil mechanics. So everything related to engineering geology. So it's about how you structure your courses from your second year onwards. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's, yeah. that's actually um, uh, great to know because you guys have been there. And, and I just want to get MV in, let's hear from uh, mining engineering side of things. But I'm also going to, you know, for the young people out there, I just want, we'll go quickly touch on your high school subject, you know, because I realized we should actually have started there and moved on to tertiary. But let's let's just hear Vigeli from a mining engineering perspective. Um, how did you go about it, um, Vigeli? Uh, well, I think if you, you're going to do uh, mining engineering or any engineering for that matter, you definitely need to have uh, any physical sciences uh, mm. as well as maths. Those are the key ones. And then you have to also pass your, your English uh, subjects. Uh, and then with, with good marks, of course, because you just have to check uh, what the, 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 the score uh, is required by uh, that particular university. Well, for example, mining engineering is offered at the University of Pretoria. Or this is where I studied myself, as well as other universities like the, 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 the University as well as the University of Transbank. And then there's also other universities that offer certain aspects of mining that you can also uh, uh, find out about. But definitely you need to do physical sciences, uh, maths, and, and have your English uh, uh, subjects. And then when you get to, to, to the university, I think the first two years of the, the, the academic uh, uh, courses will be to do general engineering, work, which involves a lot of uh, math subjects and then physics as well as some chemistry mm -hmm. in it. And then as, the, as you move further up, uh, you, you then specialize in your particular area. For example, for me, it was like mining engineering uh, related subjects like ventilation, explosives engineering, like the, which is key to like breaking the rocks where the, the, the minerals, gold and platinum uh, are found. And then that's where you're moving into like specialized uh, mining engineering uh, uh, courses. Uh, unlike when you are doing maybe uh, chemical engineering, you also focus on more uh, processing uh, and chemical engineering related subjects. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the, 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 the more you, you, you progress with your years at university, the more specialized you become in, in that particular field. Mm. Okay, so I, I hear and and um, Zama and Sumay will probably agree. I, I think uh, common subjects which are coming out are your mathematics, your you know your physical sciences. I suppose when you're in high school, you should follow those dreams. Mm, but like Sumaya Sumaya has touched on, there are different aspects also involved in supporting the mining business, not only the technical the technical ones. But, you know, uh, economics will, you know, uh, need to also factor in. You'll need people who understand uh, economics and how the mine should be pro uh, profitable. Uh, I suppose o occupational health and safety, it's very important, um, you know, to consider uh, safety and the health of, of employees. So uh, would you uh, agree, Sumeya, that, you know, there are also opportunities for uh, students who might not necessarily want to follow the uh, technical route. Yes, I agree with everything Mvikeli uh, alluded to. Um, physics, uh, maths, I think computer literacy will also be an uh, advantage um, that's important for everyone. <clears throat> and then if studying uh, non-technical related um, courses, then yes, economics will be an advantage if you want to get into the business side, English as well. Uh, but I think maths is compulsory uh, across all disciplines, so you can't get away from that. Yes, uh, I think I think uh, thank, thanks um, uh, for for your comments. Maybe on on you know uh, guiding the younger people, uh, you know, just taking them on the journey that you guys have been through. Uh, 
I just want to maybe uh, ask um, one question that just came in here. Um, and, and basically it's looking at um, you know, how we advance the mining industry. Uh, you know, uh, I think um, the question is around, you know, the sensitivity with job losses when we're looking at modernization. But the question here just asks, how can we, we mitigate that? How can that be mitigated? Um, maybe, um, Vigeli, maybe you could touch. Uh, yeah, I think that as, as the changes happen, uh, the, the, the inclusion of all the stakeholders that are involved is, is very key. And then that's where plans will be de uh, designed to say that uh, if we are changing this process, uh, a, a such number of people are going to be affected it by it, and and how are, are they going to be affected? It if if they, for example, if maybe they were doing a manual process, and and now there's a something to assist them uh, reduce that manual process, they will need to go for for training to be to be skilled in, in the new uh, uh, role that they need to, to develop. Or if maybe they, they, they inevitably there's maybe one person that won't fit into that new 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 role, then that person needs to be reskilled in a different area, find a new area. Maybe if, uh, further down in, in the design maybe of, of the new, of that particular equipment or, or uh, on late down the line, like they say, maybe in a down the line process that, that involves that, that type of machinery or in a, in, a, in a cross industry, like to say maybe be involved in the manufacturing uh, industry of that so those all those opportunities should be created by by involving everyone uh, the communities and, and and all the labor representatives the mining companies and, and they identify the exact number of people that are going to be affected and how they are going to be affected and then define ways in which those people can be assisted. I think Sumer can touch a bit on, on, on other opportunities that can uh, happen across the, the whole mining value chain as a whole, because you sometimes you shouldn't look at it as an isolated industry, but it's an industry that involves like uh, machine design as well as mineral processing and manufacturing. So if you look at it in that way, I think, and, and work as a, as a as a, it work towards that common goal, I think then there, there won't be any issues around uh, uh, job losses. But I think Sumaya can touch a bit more on that. Thanks, Mbi. <clears throat> I think with job losses, there is a possibility and a big potential for there to be simultaneous job creation as well. So mining modernization can also extend the life of mine. Mm -hmm. So instead of mines closing, whereby lots of jobs are going to be lost by extending the life of mine through modernization. Uh, a lot of people get to keep their jobs. So if you look at it that way, that's an advantage to people. Also through the creation of alternative economies, uh, you are creating more job opportunities. So for example, you'll get communities to maybe try and service or maintain the equipment that is being used um, you know, along your modernization process. Or if we look at um, mine waste beneficiation, for example, if mines are, um, are creating, um, let's say, for example, wood waste in their uh, production, there's an opportunity for communities to take that waste and make something valuable out of it. For example, biochar. Um, so I think along across the value chain mm -hmm. and with side stream activities, there are lots of opportunities uh, with mining modernization to create more jobs. Mm -hmm. Wow! Um, thanks, thanks for for just uh, adding adding on on that. And um, there's another session which is about to start now at at twelve o'clock, which I encourage um, the audience to you know stay on and. Um, you know, have a listen. But I would like to thank um, the panel members, um, Vikeli Mpofu, Zama Nkosi, Sumaya Khan. Thank you guys for, for really sharing uh, and enlightening us on such an important uh, issue, which we really need to consider. I mean, if we do not uh, start this conversation, um, 
we don't want uh, mining to be a sunset industry uh, because you know our economy is really on the line. Um, and thank you for for inspiring inspiring you know young people. Um, hopefully, we'll get them to to contribute to the mining sector. Mm. And on that note, I'd also like to thank everyone who sends in uh, questions and the audience in general uh, for joining us and staying with us. Um, uh, and on that note, we'll close off the, the session. And thank you, everyone. My name is Taban Karume. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, please enjoy the other sessions and have a wonderful day. Thank you.